In this video, I am going to discuss movements of small intestine, a repeatedly asked question for your university exams. So watch this video till the end, take down the notes as and when you are watching the video and you are ready to go for your exams. So without any delay, let's begin. So the movements of the small intestine are mixing movements under which we get two segmentation contraction and pendular movements next is the propulsive movement this is a movement which is pushing the chyme forwards okay and under this we have peristalsis and peristaltic rush and two more movements we have one is what is called as the migratory motor complex another one is called as the movements of villi remember sometimes peristalsis is asked as a separate question as a short note even migratory motor complex is many times asked either as a short note or a short answer that is either as a two or three marks question or a four or a five marks question so let's try and understand all these movements so let's first begin with the mixing movements and in that the first one is what is called as segmentation contraction so what is this segmentation contraction is that the contraction is going to occur at regular interval so here you are seeing this is the intestine and these arrow marks are the one where the contraction is occurring and we can see the contraction is occurring at regular intervals second point is that the segment of the intestine which is there in between the contracted part so this is a contracted part this is a contracted part this is a contracted part but this segment of the intestine which is present in between these two contracted part is relaxed so that means there are alternate segments of contraction and relaxation there is contraction relaxation and contraction relaxation happening now in the next movement what happens is that the contracted part of the segment is replaced by relaxed segments and the relaxed segments are replaced by contracted segments as simple as that so initially the part of the intestine which was contracted that became relaxed and the part which was relaxed that became contracted so because of this what is going to happen is the chyme which is present in the small intestine it is going to move forwards and backwards forwards and backwards so this forward and backward movement of the chyme results in mixing of the chyme with the secretions which are present in the intestine these could be intestinal secretions or these could be as well the secretions coming from the gallbladder and the liver that is the biliary secretions so one very important function of segmentation contraction is that it helps in mixing of the chyme with the secretions second is that it also increases the contact time of chyme with the mucosa so so the chyme is staying in the intestine for a longer duration of the time that means the chyme is exposed to the mucosal surface for a longer duration of time so both these things are going to aid in digestion of the chyme as well as in absorption of the chyme so this is the segmentation contraction second movement is what is called as the pendular movement again pendular movement is also a mixing movement so as the name itself suggests here what is happening here is that there is periodic contraction and relaxation of the longitudinal muscle so like when this is the intestine we have two kinds of muscles in the muscular layer one is what is called as the circular muscle and another one is what is called as the longitudinal muscle so what is happening here is that there is periodic contraction and relaxation of the longitudinal muscle in a segment of the intestine so when there is periodic contraction and relaxation of the longitudinal muscle section of the small intestine shortens and lengthens so there is repeated shortening and the lengthening of the section of the small intestine again what happens when a section of the small intestine shortens and lengthens and shortens and lengthens again this helps in movement of the chyme forward and backward okay and because this movement like because the chyme is here the chyme moves forwards and again the chyme moves backwards so this resembles the movement of the pendulum of a clock that's why these are called as the 
pendular movement so these are the two movements the segmental contraction and the pendular movement which are helping in basically mixing of the chyme remember here the chyme is not moving forwards the chyme is staying there only and it is moving forward and backward forward and backward this is aiding in mixing of the chyme with the secretions of the intestine and this helps in both absorption as well as digestion of the chyme so this is what is its function next let's understand the propulsive movement so what do we understand by the propulsive movement propulsive movement means that this is the intestine and like say this is the uh, this is the content or the food content present in the intestine the propulsive movement has to push this food forward always you we should remember that there is the law of the intestine which says that the food is always moving in the forward direction or we also called as what is called as ab oral direction that means the food is moving always from the oral direction to the anal direction so this is what is the propulsive movement and in this the most important movement is what is called as peristalsis remember that peristalsis is asked as a separate question also okay so what is peristalsis and why peristalsis occurs peristalsis is basically a reflex response so if it is a reflex response there should be a stimulus for this reflex what is the stimulus the stimulus is stretch of the gut wall what is causing stretching of the gut wall the contents of the gut are also called as the chyme which is present in the gut that is causing the stretching of the gut wall so whenever now let's say this is a part of the intestine and the chyme has entered into it so when the chyme enters into the intestine the intestinal wall is stretching so whenever the intestinal wall is stretching this stretch is initiating a circular contraction just behind the stimulus so there is a contraction occurring behind the stimulus and there is an area of relaxation in front of the stimulus so when that occurs see what is happening this is the food particle and this food particle is stretching this wall so whenever the wall is stretched what did i say it is going to initiate a circular contraction behind the stimulus and in front of the stimulus there is going to be a relaxation so what we are seeing in the gut is that there is a wave of contraction and relaxation and this wave of contraction and relaxation is always moving in what is called as the ab oral direction again i will tell you what is the meaning of the word ab oral direction that is it is moving from the oral oral to the anal direction that is what is the meaning of ab oral direction okay so what will this help in this helps in moving the chyme forward this helps in moving the chyme forward so what is the mechanism behind this peristalsis is that whenever there is a local stretch because of the food bolus or because of the chyme this local stretch releases a chemical which is called as serotonin and this serotonin goes and stimulates the myentric plexus which is present in the wall of the gut so when myentric plexus is stimulated myentric plexus at the point of stimulus releases one more chemical which is called as acetylcholine and this causes contraction of that part or just the part which is behind the chyme but in front of the stimulus the same myentric plexus is going to release nitric oxide as well as vasoactive intestinal peptide both nitric oxide as well as vasoactive intestinal peptide they are going to cause what is called as relaxation that is why i am going to get a wave of contraction and a wave of relaxation so this is the mechanism remember that peristalsis is occurring as a local reflex response but peristalsis can be modulated by inputs coming from the autonomic nervous system so autonomic nervous system influence is also there on peristalsis so if at all there is a parasympathetic stimulation that is going to stimulate the process of peristalsis and if there is sympathetic stimulation that is going to inhibit the process of peristalsis and remember one more thing that peristalsis is occurring from the level of the esophagus to the level of the rectum okay so this is all we have supposed to know regarding the peristalsis 
Next propulsive movement is what is called as the peristaltic rush. This is also similar to the peristalsis, but this is a very powerful peristaltic contraction which is occurring. Okay, what is it which is causing this? It is going to occur whenever the intestinal mucosa is irritated, whenever there is irritation of the intestinal mucosa. Like for example, intestinal mucosa can get irritated because of the presence of some infectious agent. Okay, it could be a bacteria or a virus. So, this peristaltic rush is going to begin in the duodenum and it is going to sweep the entire length of the small intestine. Completely it is going to sweep. Okay, so what is the help or what is the function of the peristaltic rush is that it helps in clearing the contents of the small intestine into the cecum because the gut doesn't want to keep that content which is causing the irritation of the mucosa. So it initiates a very powerful peristaltic contraction which begins in the duodenum and it is going to sweep the entire length of the small intestine. By doing that it is moving this these irritating contents into the cecum. So that is what is peristaltic rush. So this peristaltic rush is initiated both locally at the level of the myentric plexus as well as by the extrinsic nervous system that is the influence of the autonomic nervous system. Okay, this is peristaltic rush. Next, let's understand as to what is migratory motor complex or also called as MMC. Migratory motor complex is also a type of peristalsis which is occurring during the interdigestive period. That means when during fasting, during the period when there is fasting. That is what is called as the interdigestive period. So digestion of the food particles has occurred and almost now the intestines are empty. At that point of time, we are going to see this movement which is called as migratory motor complex. Very important to remember this, that this is occurring during the interdigestive period. So what is migratory motor complex? Migratory motor complex is also a type of peristaltic wave and it is beginning at the level of the esophagus and it is covering the entire length of the small intestine. So what is its function? Why it has to occur when the intestines are almost empty? It helps in removal of any residual food which is remaining in the intestine which was not removed or it also helps in removal of dead cells. Residual food means there could be food which is undigested or there could be food which couldn't be digested because of any reason and also it helps in removal of the dead cells. That means it is cleaning the entire small intestine and it is preparing the small intestine for the next meal. Okay. The rate of MMC or the motor a migratory motor complex is 5 centimeters per minute and it occurs every 60 to 90 minutes. Okay, and migratory motor complex are going to be immediately abolished with the entry of the food. That's why I told you that migratory motor complex is a type of peristaltic wave which is occurring during the interdigestive period because it is helping in clearing the residual food, the dead cells, and all that. This movement is called as the housekeeper of the small intestine. Okay, this much is more than enough for migratory motor complex. Now coming to the last movement, which is the movement of the villi. Okay, so what is the movement which is occurring? The movement is alternative shortening and elongation of the villi. The villi shortens, elongates, shortens and elongates. Okay, why that is going to occur? That is going to occur because of alternative contraction and relaxation of the smooth muscle. Remember that all the layers which are present in the GIT, they are also entering into the villi. So the smooth muscle of the uh, gut, when it contracts and relaxes, it is going to cause shortening and elongation of the villi. And this is going to occur or this is aided by a hormone which is called as Willikin, remember that. Okay, so what is the function of this? It helps in clearing the lymph into the lymphatic system and it also increases the surface area for the digestion, especially whenever the villi elongates because of the elongation of the villi, more amount of surface area is available for the digestion of the food. 
so this is the movement of the villi so let me just recap or summarize what all we have studied we basically divide the movements of the small intestine into two types one is called as the mixing movement another one is called as the propulsive movement under the mixing movements we have two types segmentation contraction and the pendular movements and under the propulsive movements these are the one which are propelling or moving the foot particle towards the anal side from the oral side we have peristalsis and the peristaltic rush one more very important and special movement we have seen which is called as migratory motor complex this is also a type of peristaltic movement and remember that migratory motor complex always occurs during the inter digestive period okay and they are also called as the housekeepers of the small intestine and at last we discussed regarding the movement of the villi how do the villi move villi either they shorten or they are going to elongate the shortening and elongation is done because of the smooth muscle and whenever the villi is going to elongate it is helping in increasing the surface area thus it also aids in the digestion so this is all with the movements of the small intestine i hope this video will be helpful for you if that's the case please hit the like button share this video among your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you